Randall Shambly of the Golf Channel joining me here to wrap up this Friday show and actually preview a live sporting event. How about that, Brandel? I'm tickled pink about it. Thanks for having me on, Rich. Nice to talk about uh, some real sports. Real right, golf. right. How about this? I'm gonna. This is great, Christopher. Are you ready for this? I'm gonna set the. How this is a real sports question. How does the course set up for these oh, participants? All right. How about right. that? How about that? That's a real I mean, sports we, we, question. I, I can't stream Ozark or House of Cards anymore. <laughs> I need some sports. Okay. 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 I need something to watch. Yes. Uh, how does it set up? I mean, that's a big unknown. I mean, this is one of the most mysterious uh, and I think um, reputable golf clubs in the world. Think of Augusta National having never hosted the Masters. That's kind of what we're talking about here with this golf course. But I think uh, Rory's probably the most familiar with it. His father's a member, and he's great friends with the president there, Jimmy Dunn. So I'm sure Rory's played it the best. But it's a, it's a wide-open venue, basically, uh, but with a lot of just diabolical sort of green complexes. So I think, you know, given the fact that three of the guys in the foursome are some of the longest hitters in the game, and then Ricky's probably, although not short, probably one of the best, if not the best putter in the game. So this could be like an all-out brawl. It could be like the equivalent of uh, pool sharks having trick shot contests. It could be a hell of a lot of fun to watch. Well, I, I, I'm looking forward to that. And which which team do you think has the advantage going in? That's, an, <laughs> that's another sports uh, question. I'm, I mean, this I is mean, great. Hey, right. On paper, uh, Rory and Dustin. I mean, you're talking about sure. two of the most dominant players the last 30 years. Only two players have held the number one spot in the world longer than Rory, and only four players have held the number one spot in the world longer than DJ. But then I think, you know, the ardent golf fan knows Matt Wolf, but I think those that are tuning in, and there'll be a lot of those, I think, that don't are not that familiar with the game of golf. Right, right. I think they're going to be absolutely have their mind blown by the swing of Matt Wolf. It is the most, maybe the most unusual golf swing, professional golf has ever seen, but he swings the club at about 125 miles an hour. So if you're a baseball fan, this is like Chad Bradway throwing it as fast as Nolan Ryan. That, that's what we're going to see here, like this crazy, funky action where you see it and you're going to go, what in the hell was that? And how did he do that? <laughs> and, you know, and it's because he swings so hard and Dustin hits it so far and Rory hits it so far, it could be a lot of, you know, a lot of trash talking, a lot of catch that, you know, I didn't catch that or – so it should be a lot of fun on top of being, you know, I think pretty competitive. Brandel Shambly of the Golf Channel here on the Rich Eisen Show. Again, for those who may not know about Seminole Golf Club, um, uh, you, you obviously alluded to um, how how few times it, it holds anything. Uh, I'll give you the floor and, uh, about this golf course and what we're going to see uh, on Sunday. Well, it's known as a – a masterpiece of design by a fellow by the name of Donald Ross, who designed it almost oh 100 years ago. And it's it's known for its really difficult green complexes. And within the world of golf course architect lovers, some would argue that it is the greatest second-shot golf course or the most difficult second-shot golf course in the world because the greens are pitched sharply back to front, crown, false fronts and sides, and the, the conditions are – you know, tight fairways, really, you know, unpredictable winds. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a very difficult golf course, but looks kind of easy. But it'll be beautiful because it's packed right hard against the, the Atlantic. Uh, and, and I think, uh, you, know, there's, you know, we're going to hear the players. They're going to be mic'd up likely. They're going to be some great exchanges. And it gives uh, all the players sort of a chance to show off. Well, Donald Ross had some awful, evil things in his mind back in the day when he was designing golf courses, Brandel. Well, there was a Wampanoag golf course up in uh, West Hartford, which I was a, uh, I played at when I was out at ESPN. It was a Donald Ross course. The false fronts were absurd. It just absolutely it, – it, it turned me into mush by the end. We all know Pinehurst is another Donald Ross, correct? Right? That's right. You know, I, I played the 99 U.S. Open at Pinehurst. I drove it perfect every day on the fifth hole. I only had eight iron in there every day, and I never sniffed hitting the green. And that's, <laughs> that's amazing. And, and, you know, I, I joked my caddy that it was harder to hit than a tropical mosquito. <laughs> and, that, and, that's, and that's the green complexes of Dollar Ross. They're these perched-up little greens. They look big enough, but when you actually get up there, they're, they're as big as your kitchen, you know? I mean, you got to hit the perfect shot, shape the perfect way with the right amount of spin and the right trajectory, and then the very next hole you'll have different winds because the holes move around in different directions 
So it, it will challenge, and it does, you know, challenge the best players. Very many times, you know, you know, when you walk off that golf course, you think, I cannot believe I just shot 77 or 78. Look, the first time Arnold Palmer played there back uh, when he was a rookie, right? He was just getting started on the tour. He went out, he shot 87. Mm-hmm. And he told his wife, I don't think I'm going to go back out the next day. She said, you can't do any worse. <laughs> and he went out and shot 88. <laughs> That's so, great. That'll, that'll give you some idea of the difficulty of this golf course, even though it has never been notoriously known as a long golf course. I mean, it, it will play 7,200 yards and change, but not. it's not going to challenge these guys in length. It'll just challenge them in second shots and shots around the green. You sound chipper, man. This is a golf event. It's human beings. It's going to be live. We're going to watch it. It's. It's. Just, you sound like you're in a. This is chipper, Brandel Chambly. This is great. Listen, you know, I I left the Players Championship March 13th. Drove right. home, got back, talked to my wife, and I said, I don't know that we're going to play golf the rest of the year. You know, because it it just sounded the uncertainty and the doom and gloom and making allowances for the worst case scenario. So the idea that they're going to get out and safe and responsibly get back to playing golf without fans under the right conditions. Uh, you know, golf is, you know, it's a lot of fun, but if you're a professional golfer or a professional athlete, mm. competition is addictive. You know, it's nicotine, and, and everybody in the game is, is itching to light up right now. And everybody in sport is itching to light up. It's like, let's get back to competing and, and trying to make the best out of this and compete safe and responsibly. And then, you know, uh, the only one who's more chipper is Chris Brockman, my uh, degenerate across the way, who's actually um, with his friends. You're, 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 you're propping and all that sort of stuff, right? Do you want to, uh, you want to, you want to ask his uh, Brandel Chambly's expert sure, advice? I, I, I'm going to give you actual piece of real I have estate. Lots here. of questions here. Okay, so uh, we're talking about the second hole. Who do you think might say drive it the furthest on hole oh, two? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think that I'd give the edge to Matt Wolf. I, I, again, Matt Wolf can swing upwards of 130 miles an hour. Wow. And, you know, Changing my pick. Rory is around 122 to 124. DJ's about the same, although he hasn't been as fast this year. So I, I'd give, I mean, I think Matt will surprise some people. You know, these things are notoriously hard to handicap because one match plays, given players of this skill, it's almost a, toy, a coin toss. But then players show up in these matches with varying degrees of sort of uh, intensity. You don't know who's practiced. You don't know who hasn't. So I, I think more than anything, this is going to be like the, uh, the all-star game. You know, guys are going to be showing off. And it's, it's really the purpose that, yeah, sure, they're competing to win. There's pride at stake. But really it's just to raise some entertain people and raise some money for an incredible cause. Yeah, of course. That's well and good. But oh, stop. is it going to be a close match, or do you see this as a blowout one way or the other? I, I personally, you know, and good. I mean, I'm, I'm, I think of 17, 18 years of trying to guess the winner of tour events, I might have gotten two right. Nice. I mean, yeah. You're getting it's, the, you're barking up the wrong tree, is what he's saying. It is not easy, right? And nobody's record is any better, right? They're, everybody's terrible. But this one can only go one of two ways. So I, I would definitely give the edge to Rory and TJ. Uh, you know, they're they're you know they're yeah. both number one players in the world. They both won the Varden Trophy. They both hit at nine miles. They got the edge there. Uh, they got the edge in driving, and they got the edge in approach shots. And I think that'll be the difference. This is exciting. That's the bottom line. I it's bet on Rory awesome. and DJ. All right, there all right, you go. That, there you that's go. all I was looking <laughs> for, Brandon. Thank you. I'm just, oh, I'm if looking you for. If you want to go down the degenerate lane, I'll give it to you. Bet on Rory and DJ. There you go. There you go. Closest to the Stop pin it. on five. Cut his microphone <laughs> off. <laughs> Cut his. Oh, my gosh. I, I, I tell you what, I, I'll go with Rory closest to the pin on five. There you go. <laughs> all right. Thank you, sir. Uh, all right. Your envelopes in Put the it mail. all down. And I love how you said I, Matthew Wolf has, Wolf's got the uh, strangest swing of a professional golfer. That, that, that allowed you the, the Barkley uh, room that you need to have in terms of a swing, Brandel. Yeah, well, now let's, we're talking professional. Barkley owns that real estate. It's, it's his for the weirdest golf swing maybe in the history of the game. But in professional golf, and there's been some weird ones, Jim Furyk, Lee Trevino, oh, gosh. Dave Brewer. But Matt Wolf, well, wait you see. Maybe you've already seen it, Rich. I'm sure you have. But, you know, it's, it's unbelievably 
unique. Well, I can't I wait mean, to see it uh, this weekend on uh, Golf Channel, NBC, NBCSN, uh, Balls in the Air at 2 Eastern time. Uh, Brandel, thanks for coming uh, on the show. We'll get you back on maybe next week to preview the Tiger, Phil, Brady, Peyton good. Manning extravaganza, too. Good. That'll be fun. You guys take care. Thanks for having me on the show. Enjoy oh, you got it. Enjoy the weekend. Thanks, Randall. Enjoy the weekend. Thanks so much. Actual, take care, fellas. You got it. There you go. Actual event. Actual event. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.